What's going on everybody? Hip Pause here with a quick tutorial for Unreal Engine 4 on how to actually tell if you are looking at something. So if you look at that sphere over there on the left, that Unreal Engine default sphere, if I actually move this around my screen you can see there's no change but as soon as I put it within the center of my screen within a certain tolerance here you can see it lights up. Okay, But I have to be looking at it Okay, so if I look away from it, then it lights up. When I look at it, look away, look at it, look away. Okay, my light is actually here too, by the way. So there it goes, it lights up. Very simple, but very, very useful. So how do we do this? Basically, my character has nothing on it. The sphere is a blueprint, but it really has nothing on it. Uh, there's no graph. Uh, all it is is uh, it has a light in the component, okay? A point light here, okay? Just named point light doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so there's nothing there. Uh, the magic is actually happening here on the uh, level blueprint. Now, uh, what I'm doing here on the begin play, it's very, I'm not doing anything weird here. I'm just getting some stuff. Basically, I get my player character, I cast it, I get his follow camera, because remember, this is happening off of my camera, it's not happening off of my actual character's rotation, so it's where I'm seeing. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to use his camera. Okay, and what I do is I basically capture that, I promoted this to a variable, and I saved it, you can see camera component here. Okay, after that, what I do is I get the mesh for the ball, and I uh, get its material and I just store that as an original material because I am changing the material. I also get its point light, okay, and I set the intensity to zero. Okay, so on level start, the light is off. Okay, you can see that there, it comes on when I look at it. Okay, so that's all that's doing. So I store my, car I store my camera and I turn its light off. And that's it. And I store its original material. So what I'm doing is I'm doing this on tick. Now this isn't exactly the best place to do it. You could do this on like a timer or or something else, but um, just just to make sure that it works and there's nothing else going on in this map. I don't really care. I just wanted to get it working. So the first thing that I do is I find my look at rotation, okay? Between my camera's location and the actor's location, which is that ball, okay? And I find the look at rotation, which is just a node that you get, okay? Uh, find look at rotation, okay? It takes in two um, points in space, okay? These are these are locations, all right? Vector locations. And then what I do is I do a delta rotator. This is the magic right here. Uh, everything is right here. This is why I'm making this tutorial. It kind of took me a while to to uh, find this guy. Um, so what I do is I get my camera's rotation in the world and I get the look at rotation and then I do a delta on that and what that's going to do is that's going to simply give me an angle between these two okay and it works in all all three axes it gives me the angle between the two pitches the angle between the two yaws and the angles from the from the rolls as well okay but we don't use a roll here so I get the delta rotator I break it up and what I do is for each of these yaw and pitch it really matter which which of these I did here let's pull this down so you can see how that's hooked up I check if the absolute value is less than my look precision now look precision is a simple float and I have it set to 15 degrees okay if I set this higher the precision becomes much broader okay so what I do is I check are both of these absolute values because what it is is remember the pitch can be negative or positive and so can the yaw. It can be like ne I could be looking it could be negative 30 which would be 30 to my right or positive 30 which would be 30 to my left. Uh, I don't care. I just want to see if it's within 30 degrees in either way. So I throw the absolute value. Everybody should know what absolute value is. Okay, as long as those are both less with an and here, I run a branch. If it's true, the only thing I do is I say, hey set the material of the ball to match the material of my character okay this is the base blue this is the material that just comes with it okay so I set its material and I turn its point light intensity to 10,000 if it is if they are not less than that 
okay, which means those angles, either one of those angles is greater than that. I set the material back to his original material that I stored in the beginning. Okay, I just promoted this variable. Okay, and then I set the light intensity to zero. And that's it. So now that you see that I have changed the precision value here to 35, you can see it's a much, much wider area here. Okay, it's basically as long as it's just about within my view. I could increase it a little bit more and basically that would be a perfect way for me to tell if something is, is within my camera frustrum. Okay, a real simple and I think pretty cheap method of doing it too. I'm not entirely sure how cheap it, uh, Delta is, but it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so that's that. So the other cool thing about the Delta rotator is that it actually can feed you back whether or not um, you're actually something is to your left or to your right. So I'm just going to go ahead and dupe this out here and I'm going to bring the yaw and I'm going to check, hey, is this, if this is less than zero, okay, let's throw a branch here. If it's less than zero, and that's why I got you, so I can, either one of these comes off here, okay. So if it is less than zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print on my right. If not, I'm going to print on my left. It's on my left. It's on my right. It's on my left. It's on my right. Now the awesome thing about the delta rotator is because it's doing a straight up angle here, you'll notice that the on my right print never falters even though I am running a full 360 around it. Okay, Let's throw it on my left. I can make a full 360 run around this thing. If you look, it will never accidentally say it's on my right. Because if you don't do it this way, the it's kind of hard to explain, but what ends up happening is you end up with the, it's almost like a rotational lock, gimbal lock. You hit those maximum limits where you're you're dealing with uh, 0 and 360 being the exact same thing. So the problem happens is the normal way to do this would be say, hey, I want to get my rotation. I'll just subtract the look at rotation to find out what it is, right? But what if the look at rotation is, is uh, 350 and I'm looking 10 degrees, right? The actual, dis the actual angle between those two uh, directions is 20 degrees. But 350 minus 10 is not 20, right? That's 340. So your math gets all screwed up. It'll say, hey, it's properly on my right, or it's properly on my left. But as soon as I go into like a, like a, a different quadrant of the world, what will happen is everything will be inverted. So then you've got to start running this gigantic series of checks to see whether or not um, you're within certain like quadrants from the thing you know, whether or not you're northeast or northwest or southeast or southwest and start adjusting all this crazy math and you end up with this massive, massive system of nodes where a delta rotator just works. One node. Gives you the angle, basically the shortest angle between them. You can see if I turn all the way around, it works. Okay, It's behind and to my right right now, now it's behind and to my left. If I teeter-totter right on that edge, I can kind of flip it back and forth. Now in terms of uses for this, there's really kind of a million of them to be honest with you. Obviously for lock-on targets, you know, this could be a final check to say, hey, uh, is, you know, can I lock on to these things because, you know, I don't want to lock on to something that's behind me. I don't want to lock on to something I can't see. This is a good check to make sure that it's within my range here, right? Um, you could also say, hey, which one is the closest? You know, you could fire a look at to each of, you know, to an array of targets and whichever whichever delta comes in the lowest is the one that's closest to the center of your camera then you filter that then you filter by distance then you fill you know and then you you know one two three filters and you finally get a perfect lock on target right the one that's directly in front of you uh, the other thing is to say for instance you had like a rocket and the rocket was uh, a heat seeking rocket and it needed to know whether or not it could still heat seek on something well you could give it uh, precision basically and you could say hey you know throw me a look at to my target 
check my angle, do a delta between those two things. If it's within this tolerance, I can lock on. Otherwise, I'm pointed too far away from it, right? I'm, I'm looking too far away. That way, it'll never try to lock onto something behind it. It won't try to lock onto something 90 degrees to the right of it. It'll all work out perfect. The other one, and the reason that I needed it, was because if you have an AI that's moving towards something, and then say you wanted to know if the AI had to turn to his left or turn to his right so that you could have an animation blueprint actually tell it what animation to play properly. Now, when you're playing as a character, you have an input, and that's real easy when you do an animation blueprint. If you want to fire a blend variable, you say, hey, you know, if, it's, if my yaw is negative one, I'm going left. If my yaw is positive one, I'm going right. Play those animations, yippity zippity doo dah. But here's the thing, when you do AI, you don't necessarily control them by throwing in inputs, okay? Because at the end of the day, rotation is not done through the character move, uh, through the uh, movement component as much as it is done by setting, uh, either adding local or setting uh, an actor's uh, rotation, and most of the time, we just interp the rotation to something, right? So it becomes extremely difficult to tell if your AI, now this is, remember again, this is something that you're not controlling, this is something that's controlling itself, to determine whether or not that thing is going to, needs to turn left or if that thing needs to turn right. Here's where the delta rotator comes into play there, and that's this is where this will save your ass. It's very easy to tell, basically, which direction something is from it, because the AI, remember, doesn't have a camera, right? And it's, you know, uh, you can use inputs. You can say, you can use inputs for like forward, but you got to remember that turning is not an action. It is an axis. It is not from one to negative one and just an on-off thing as much as it can be. I guess suppose it could, but, you know, then you'd have to do some multiplication to figure out how fast you wanted it to turn and all that thing, all that stuff. But trust me, uh, I've been doing it with some AI and it was very hard for me to figure out if, if, uh, I was animating my character turning that that AI turning left or turning right because I was saying, hey, you know, go over to this point. And when he went left, it worked fine. But then if he was north of it, he would glitch over to the right until he spun around, and then he would flip back and forth a couple of times. And it kept being a pain in the ass. Once I used the delta rotator with the very simple get an angle between these two things, I just checked, hey, is it less than zero? Positive? Is it or is it above zero? And Everything works perfect. Doesn't matter where in relation the AI is to the to its target. It knows whether or not it's on its left or it's on its right. You could also very easily be able to tell if something is above or below you, exactly the same way. I'm not really sure about roll, but honestly, roll like do you really need roll? I suppose, but in this case, I think that uh, uh you know, pitch and yaw basically will always work to get you uh, some kind of pointer between two locations in space. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Again, left, right, very, very, very reliable, very easy to do, and pretty much uh, cannot be broken uh, that I can see yet. I haven't been able to break it. I've been using it quite a bit. And I just thought it would help people because it opened a lot of doors for me when I realized that uh, that's what it was called. I was trying to subtract them, get the uh, A cosine. Uh, I tried arctangent too. I mean, I, I went through all the wiki math and tried everything, and it was just this huge rabbit hole of crap and finally, uh, Delta Rotator. So there you go, and thanks for watching.